Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Thanks for being here. Today I'm doing a voiceover and I'm doing a 20 by 20 inch canvas um, Dutch pour. So I'm be using, I'll be using rainbow um, colors on a gray base. Now the gray base, I do not have a color for you unfortunately. It is um, a combination or a mixture of um, many leftover paints that I had from previous paintings. So here I'm laying down the base and you can see that I have quite a bit of paint so at the end of spreading the paint I kind of um, went up and down the canvas with the hair dryer to make sure that I have even coverage and not too much paint sitting on the canvas. So here I'm trying something different. I've never done this before. I'm going to stagger the colors as I work up the um, canvas. So you can see I have quite a lot of colors there. All the colors are in the description of the video. And so you, you'll be able to see what all the colors are except for the gray. Um, but yeah, so I was trying this out because A, I've never done this before. And B, um, it's actually a really good way to see um, what color combinations work um, in one shot. So being able to put down all of the colors in a certain order, but just kind of overlapping slightly versus um, if you know, usually when I do these um, Dutch pours and when a lot of people do the Dutch pours, they are... Um, they're retracing the entire line with all of the colors. So obviously this is a lot of colors that would be far too much paint to have on the canvas when I go to blow it out. So, um, and I wanted kind of a rainbow effect where the colors um, evolve as they, as, as you move through the canvas, across the canvas. So. Um, that's what I was trying today. So I really do like these colors. Um, once it's done, you'll see how well they actually work together. Um, and it's a mixture of um, pearl paints and opaque paints. And there is um, a little bit of gold at the end that I did. Uh, that's the only metallic, I believe. Um, that was in the paint. So it's a, it's a good mixture to get the different um, kind of reactions that you're looking for. So you want definition of the composition, but you also want some interaction. So I do like to get cells, though I don't like to have too many cells. I don't like them to over overtake the painting when I do the Dutch pour, not like a bloom where you want lots of big, beautiful cells. Um, and so, yeah, so I like to mix the um, different types of paint within the same painting. All of my paints are mixed with um, Flood Floetrol and water. So the Flood Floetrol you can buy at most hardware stores, um, either Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace or whatever your local hardware store is that you buy paint supplies. Um, and so depending on the type of Dutch pour I'm doing, I may use more or less Floetrol and water. So in this one, I have a ratio, approximate ratio of about 50% Floetrol, 25% um, paint and 25% water, um, which makes them a little bit thick. You'll see when I blow it, it, it moves slowly, but that's what I'm looking for in this particular painting. Um, if you saw my black and white, I wanted that one to be a little bit thinner and I wish, I actually wish that, that it was a little bit thinner after I had done it. Still happy with the results, but um, I wanted to have a little bit more of a flow and airy look to it, which I did get. Um, by turning my hair dryer up on high speed rather than low. But I could also have gotten that effect on low and 
maybe saved myself a little bit of mess, <laughs> um, not having to use high by having a little bit more water. So these have, this paint, this painting in particular has um, a little bit more flow chart, a little bit less water because I want to have more definition um, in my Dutch petals. So I'm topping all of the colors off with, um, I had a little line of gold going through all the colors and then this is um, Arteza Pearl White just for some contrast to help to break up all of the um, all of the different dark colors. I did try to alternate lights and darks to get the con contrast as well um, and it came out pretty well. So here I'm just using my torch to pop any bubbles that I may have. I did have to do a couple of touch-ups there, so there were some additional bubbles that I hadn't, um, had probably already popped earlier, but reappeared when I added more paint. So here I'm just blowing, blowing the colors very slowly, um, and I wanted this particular, um, piece to have a good amount of negative space, so I wanted a lot of gray and I just wanted the pop of color going diagonally across the canvas um, but leaving it a little bit more um, simple and um, less busy. So um, I don't remember if I said this but at the end of the video I will show you um, close up of the wet painting right after it was blown out and then um, a video of the dried results um, and actually t just today I finished resining it so that will be almost completely done once I get the frame on it it'll be completely done and ready to go up on my store um, I don't resin all of my paintings, but this this one I did, and um, the current collection I'm working on will all have resin and frames. They're all um, somewhat larger, a um, little bit more extravagant <laughs> pieces. You could see my thumbs up. I was really happy with the way that blew out, and um, that's definitely a benefit of taking my time to... Um, make sure I get the get the composition that I'm looking for. So I was very happy blowing out a little little bit more of the blowing of the air bubbles with the torch um, and seeing if any cells open up. And now you can see I'm scraping the bottom of my canvas. And so I try to start to do that immediately after I'm done um, with my piece so that um, it doesn't drag a lot of the paint and the colors off the canvas. So the longer it drips and the more it drips, so if I had had a lot more paint on, like I said earlier, I took most of the extra paint off. But if I had too much paint on the canvas or and or if I let them drip for too long, it would start to pull um, a lot of the paint off and it would distort my composition and then um, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't look as as great I mean it doesn't look terrible sometimes it just, again depends on lots of different factors uh, the consistency of your paint the temperature of, you, of the room how fast or slow it dries but definitely um, it's definitely worth it just to scrape the bottom and I do that for about the first half hour paint here I'm taking off any specks or what have you that I may have dropped into the paint or fell into the paint or lint sometimes my hair falls into the paintings and I have to fish it out with the skewer so um, just you know basic cleanup work after after I'm done I really did not need any other tweaking on this painting so um, happy with that. Here's the close-up of the wet results and as you can see great 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 combination of cells um, really bubbly cells in some cases and I think that's from the pearl uh, pearl paint. Um, some lacing there, some more cells um, 
it was really fun colors. I was really happy with um, these color combinations and how they looked. And here's the dry result hanging before it was resined today. And so, um, yeah, that's the finished result. I hope you enjoyed the video and that this um, you got some use out of it. Drop me a comment or a line or send me an email if you have any questions and definitely hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified when I post new videos. Hope everyone has a great day and I'll see you back here again next time. Thank you.